Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jake. Uh, my project is on the extraction of radiomics features in FETPET for prognostic evaluations of gliomas. Uh, my supervisors are Martin, Hedgeman and Rosslyn. Uh, this is sort of reiterating a lot of things that Dane said because it's a similar project, but his is more on the dynamics or his mind's feature extraction of the images. Uh, okay, so I'm going to break down the title first. So keywords are in red. So radiomics first. Uh, this is just a concept of extracting quantitative features from images of cancers and associating them with outcomes like progression and survival. Um, so essentially all the project will be mainly based around this process. Uh, FET, so this is radio pharmaceutical. Uh, it's tagged with fluorine 18, which is a positron emitter. Um, it's got high uptake in brain tumors which is what we need because that's the focus of this project. Um, PET, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Uh, it's a functional imaging modality. Uh, it's positron emission tomography, so it relies on the positron electron annihilation and the gamma ray detection. Uh, prognostic evaluations. So this is just using the radiomics features and associating them with how, how the patient will progress throughout the disease and the survival as well. So glioma is just a tumour originating in glial cells. Okay, so I'll just talk about uh, what gliomas are a bit more. So this is actually old, they've actually come up with uh, five levels of grading now, but I'm going to go with the old system. So what they do is they classify gliomas based on the histology of tissues affected. Um, and they subdivide that further into four grades. So low grade is grade one and two, which is just the less aggressive kind. And grade high grade is grade three and four. Uh, the most common, oops, it's first. Sorry. So high grade gliomas are very aggressive. Uh, about from a paper I read, about a quarter of the patients are still alive after two years. And the most common is glioblastomas in adults. Um, so these are a grade four astrocytoma. And there's an associated overall survival, median overall survival of 17 months post-diagnosis. So it's quite dismal. Uh, this is just an image of a 62-year-old patient with a glioblastoma. So these are the MRI images uh, and the corresponding FET PET image. And then two months later, down here, uh, we can see he hasn't really responded well to treatment. Um, okay. So radiomics features, so what actually are they? So radiomics itself is a complex multi-step process that aids in clinical decision making uh, and outcome prediction. So the features themselves, these are quantitative measures that are used to associate uh, the likely course of the patient's disease. Um, so there's sort of different categories, so first order features, these are sort of just statistical measures. So these describe the uh, voxel intensity as a whole, uh, such as energy, entropy and kurtosis. Shape base, these characterise the shape of the tumour uh, and the size. Uh, texture base, these sort of relate the rate of change of uh, voxel intensity in a given distance that's prescribed. So all these uh, can be used in different ways to uh, predict how the patient uh, will progress. So I'll look at some examples in detail. Um, so entropy is related to just the randomness of the region of interest in voxel values. So basically it's been known that the more heterogeneous a tumour is, can associate that with the level of mal malignancy. So the more heterogeneous, the more aggressive. So this is just, uh, just defined on the terms. So NG is just uh, the intensity value. There's NG intensity values that you can take on. So it's a sum of those. PI is the probability that a voxel will have intensity I. Uh, and epsilon is just an arbitrarily small number that's set to be like 10 to the negative 6, I think. Um, so spherical disproportion, so this is a shape based feature which basically tells you how much the tumour varies from an ideal sphere. So 
the less ideal, uh, the more aggressive it is as well. That's another way to predict uh, the prognosis. So here the area, this is the surface area of the tumour of interest. R is just the uh, radius of a sphere that would have the same volume of that tumour. Coarseness, this is related to uh, how rapidly the voxel intensities change in a given distance. So this is a bit different. So if this thing goes up, that's associated with a more uniform uh, tumour. So uh, SI has a very complex definition. You can't really describe it. But I haven't listed it here. So basically, you want, you want this to be low for a better prog prognosis, low, and this to be high. Uh, so at the moment, we've got 24 uh, high-grade glioma patient cohorts, so grade 3 and 4 gliomas from Sir Charles Gardner. So this includes, uh, so what the patients do, they get diagnosed and they have surgery, and then they have uh, an initial MRI and FET-PET after that, uh, after surgery, so we have that. Then we have chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Following that, we have a follow-up. MRI PET, PET scan. So we have that. And also the corresponding progression and survival information. Uh, so we could also expect more data through a new multi center trial uh, that might be commencing later this year, uh, being coordinated here as well. Uh, so this is just an image of the uh, FET from before. So we've got fluorine on the end there. So the overarching aim is just outcome prediction. So given, given an image, a fair, fair image, and extracting features, what's going to happen to the patient, essentially. So we use features from the pre-treatment scans. We also look at, I'm going to look at the changes in image-based features in the pre-treatment the pre set and the post-treatment set and look at how they've changed and associate that with uh, their prognosis. Uh, thirdly, we're going to consider the features in combination from MRI and FETPEC. So you do the radiomic analysis on both uh, imaging modalities. And additionally, we're going to look at the stability of just 10 of the 24 patients uh, between two days and one week. So how is this going to be done? So essentially it's just computational, uh, which suits me because practically I'm incapable. <laughs> uh, so hopefully uh, we're waiting on Martin's US collaborators to get back with some MATLAB code. Uh, otherwise it's going to be done uh, using a pyradiomics package from 3D Slicer uh, in Python, which does all these feature extractions in 2D, 3D. Uh, voxel by voxel or just in a region of interest. So why is this worth doing? So as discussed before, gliomas have a very dismal prognosis. Um, second thing is if you know what's going to happen or if you know what's likely to be happening throughout the course of their disease before you give them treatment, you're able to give them an optimal treatment plan, uh, which would result in uh, better survival rates overall, or longer uh, life expectancies. Uh, there's also been studies into uh, using this approach to head and neck, other head and neck tumours and also breast tumours. So there's possible extrapolation using this approach uh, to other cancers. So a particularly relevant study that I've looked at is this one by, uh, I think it's Kibur et al. So he took a sample size of 14 patients with high-grade glioma. Uh, 11 were glioblastoma and 3 were just grade 3 glioma. And they had suspected pseudoprogression. Uh, so basically what he wanted to do was use radiomics to uh, be a detector in whether it was true progression or pseudoprogression. So the process was they got diagnosed, had surgery, then they had radiotherapy. Four weeks later, they had an MRI. Uh, this was the MRI that they got the suspected pseudo-progression from. Uh, 
They also went underwent a routine fet fet scan. Uh, four weeks after that, they had a follow-up MRI. This was the MRI that actually diagnosed whether it was pseudo-progression or true progression. And then given all of that, they could associate the radionics with whether it was true progression or pseudo-progression. Uh, so that was the follow-up MRI. So if in the follow-up MRI, if there was still contrast enhancement, that, that was diagnosed to be true progression. And if it decreased, uh, they were diagnosed to just have pseudo-progression. So what they did was they extracted uh, 10 features, 10 radionic features, and based on the similarity in features, they uh, grouped the patients into three clusters. Um, so cluster two, was called the high heterogeneity cluster. This was because it showed high levels of entropy and uh, contrast. And as discussed before, entropy measures the like disorder, disorder of the system. So higher disorder gives you uh, higher heterogeneity. Uh, cluster three was it was like the opposite. So it had lower entropy, uh, low correlation, and low size zone variation. Um, I'll talk about what these actually mean after. And then in, in between that, that didn't really have any variation, was uh, called cluster one, and that was just intermediate. Uh, interestingly enough, five out of six in cluster one had true progression. Uh, all of them in cluster two had true progression. And three out of four in the third one had uh, pseudo progression. So it's sort of shows how radiomics can uh, distinguish between true progression and pseudo-progression. Uh, yeah. Another thing to note was that the total lesion uptake, so total lesion uptake is sort of proportional to a poorer prognosis, and it was found that in cluster three it was lower, which makes sense because they were diagnosed with pseudo-progression rather than true progression. Um, so this isn't what I'll be doing, but this is just an example of how, how radiomics can, um, uh, well, here they can distinguish between pseudo-progression and true progression in gliomas. Uh, so other papers, so this is the one I just discussed. Uh, the, these two authors, uh, they used radiomics to grade gliomas. Uh, they used radiomics in combination with machine learning. Uh, and they used a minimum redundancy, maximum relevance algorithm. So basically what it does is it has three equations. It, it tries to maximize a uh, parameter called relevance in the first equation, minimize uh, redundancy in the second equation, and the third equation like uh, simultaneously satisfies these. So it wants maximum relevance, minimum redundancy. So it chooses the features that uh, give you maximum uh, re relevance and minimum redundancy in uh, distinguish, distinguishing between low grade and high grade gliomas. So the uh, machine learning classifiers they use was just these three different ones. Um, so this is just my research map at the moment. So I've done the first thing, research proposal on literature review. Uh, so after exams, going to start pre-processing the data. So this involves removing any artifacts in the MRI or the images. Uh, following that, we're going to use a semi-automatic image segmentation and region of interest specification. Uh, after that, we want to extract the features. Uh, analyze these, we're going to do statistical measures as well to see how well they actually can predict patient progression and survival. Um, and then associate these with clinical outcomes using the data we hopefully publish after that. That's So that's, like the other study only had 14, which is quite a small sample size, but it's, we're sort of hoping to do this and then later on take bigger samples and apply the same approach. So it's sort of just a, a start 
of something bigger at the moment. So yeah, the sample size limits the uh, predict like the predictive capability of the features. Yeah. Um, so some of the radiance features require a volume, and you sort of mentioned it in the map there. How, how do you define what the volume is? Uh, so we we set the tumor volume as uh, anything 1.6 times the max the sand uptake value of the background. So anything that's greater than that, that's considered tumor volume. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you think the quality of surgery, a surgeon, can change the quality? Uh, yes, because if they get more of the tumor, then that's going to give us whatever. If they get more of the tumor, then that's going to give us a prognosis for a start. So, yeah. Um, when you were talking about the series of images, you sort of said the first tumor image is going to be post surgery, and that's sort of a pre treatment baseline image. Yeah. Um, if there's sort of, you're sort of talking about looking at being able to, as um, there's more data available, being able to expand um, how the, the application of the data to more than 24 patients and get larger study sets as it's coming. Would there be a scope to be doing a pre-surgery um, PET, so you're getting a baseline before there's any intervention? So doing, oh okay, so then you can sort of give better surgery. The, and, and and sort of is there any prognostic sort of is the pros, prognostic indicator that original tumor um, or is it actually the uh, how good the surgery is sort of yeah. and I mean it's not something that I don't it's not something that I don't think could, can be done at the moment with um, the data sets that you have but yeah. if you're looking at expanding <coughs> projects is that yeah, something that would be, be considered? Because yeah. if you just have the tumor there originally, then that could give you different information from taking the features after surgery. Yeah, that would be something to look at. Interesting, because this is a, this is a trial that's going to be starting there towards the end of this year, with respect to the trial for glioma. Yeah. And there's no pre surgery imaging included now, I'm not sure why. Because, I mean, I guess for, for us when we're looking at our radiotherapy volumes, we take into account the pre-surgery MRI imaging. So, and that does impact what we end up doing and the growth that we put on our volumes. Um, but, that, I mean, I am also aware that with these trials when you're rolling it out, it's, it it's not routine to be done pre-surgery at the moment so there's no you're giving the patient additional exposure and you've got to make sure that you're not you're not doing any additional mm. harm um, and there may be delay in accessing the services where it's actually just better that they get the tumour out in the first place so there's quite possibly very good reasons why it hasn't been How do they know? Is, it, is there any Um, it's it it just depends on the local centre as practice. It's not being mandated in the trial. Mm. Mm. Any other questions? Mm. 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 Mm.